Hey everybody, welcome back to The Pressing Matters. I'm Scott, thank you for tuning in and thank you for your support. Uh, today we're gonna to be taking a look at uh, Pink Floyd's follow-up to The Piper at the Gates of Dawn, their second album, A Saucer Full of Secrets, which has recent, recently been reissued in mono, just like its uh, pre predecessor, Piper. Um, there was the limited record store day editions of both of those albums in mono, uh, Pink Floyd Records decided to do a mass release of the mono record, and this one just came out. So stay tuned for the review. Um, if you haven't already and you like this kind of content, um, please consider subscribing. Hit subscribe and notification so you can be sure to get notified of any new content that comes up. Um, if you could all hit like as well, that would be appreciated. Um, so with Piper, with Piper, there is a case to be made for both records, mono and stereo. A lot of people will say stereo is the only way to listen to a psychedelic record. And I get what they're saying. Um, but in the case of Piper, I prefer the mono. I prefer the mono. Um, the mono has a more direct, punchy sound, more coherent. There are some little changes in in the mix, but overall, I like the mono on that one. And when the Record Store Day Edition came out, I grabbed it right away because the monos, original monos are so rare, it's almost unattainable, especially for a beautiful pressing like we got with the Record Store Day Edition. So these monos are very welcome. Um, with Saucer Full of Secrets, um, the case is a little bit different. The mono is not that much different in terms of the mix. Um, there are a few things that shine on the mono, um, but the stereo, a case could be made for the stereo being the preferential uh, record. Um, the stereo that I have is this one. Um, this is a British pressing from 1983. It has, uh, the tan Columbia label. And, you know, I can't do a correct comparison between stereo and mono, except to say that I do prefer the stereo pressing. Um, I also have the Pink Floyd Records stereo pressing done by Bernie Grenman. And I like that even better than this one. This one is a great pressing, very clean, beautiful, but the sound is a little peaky. It's a little distorted. I don't know, maybe it's a used record, so maybe it had had a rough life uh, before me, but uh, it doesn't seem like it. It's, it's a really clean pressing, but I think this recording just has its issues and it can sound a little distorted on, on certain parts. Um, the mono, the mono um, cleans that up a bit. This is um, the new mono. And it says, uh, the classic album remastered from the original mono mix, um, heavyweight 180 gram vinyl, remastered from the original mono analog tapes by James Guthrie, Joel Plant, and Bernie Grunman, 2019. That was the date of the Record Store Day edition. Uh, original UK release date, 1968. Um, don't take this to mean that it's an all analog pressing. It's not. Um, this is from a digital file and then mastered to vinyl by Bernie Grunman. Um, don't let that dissuade you, however, um, as in the case with all the Pink Floyd records um, that have been released on the Pink Floyd label. Um, they all are from digital, but they all sound fantastic. And Bernie Grunman has uh, taken control of that uh, of those remasterings and done a fantastic job. Given that they are only from digital tapes, they sound quite analog-like and uh, really a successful series. Um, this mono sounds better uh, than any other pressing I have in terms of clarity. Um, the stereo effects are missed for sure. 
Um, there's a lot of tasteful stereo effects in this. Whereas Piper had kind of a little more gimmicky back and forth ping pong type effects. This one is a good case can be made for stereo. Um, a couple of tracks, as I said, shine on this. Um, one being Corporal, Corporal Clegg, um, being in mono, is uh, much, much better than the stereo. Uh, you'll have to see it, but if you, <laughs> you'll have to hear it, I mean. But if you, you know, if you've heard Corporal Clegg, you know, it can give you, be a little bit <laughs> um, aggressive sounding in the treble. Um, and, you know, that kazoo, uh, kazoo orchestra at the end can be a little bit jarring. Um, on the mono, it sounds much, much better um, and more direct and more, more impact. It's, it's really nice. Um, you know, other tracks suffer from not having stereo, like Let There Be More Light and Set the Controls for the Heart of the Sun, where there's a lot of spatial effects that are very tastefully done and um, kind of essential for this record, I, th I think. Um, overall, you know, the sound is the, probably the best it could be. The monotape so sounds like it's in better shape than the stereo was. Um, it's not an essential, I would say. It's not an essential release to have the mono like it is Piper or for that matter, something like um, Sgt. Pepper, for instance, you know, where the mono is an essential as an adjunct to the stereo. In this case, you know, it's an interesting thing to have. Um, it's the differences in the mix are not that great. It's pretty similar in that regard. It's nice to get a clean mastering from from Bernie Grunman of this tape. It's a nice it's a nice thing. Um, I prefer stereo on this one, but I'm glad to have a mono as well. Um, you know, it, well, I'd be interested to hear what you think about mono versus stereo on this. Um, but if you are in the market for a mono, this is the way to go. Um, it's probably the only way to go because finding a mono of this is almost impossible. An original mono and not, certainly not gonna be in this uh, beautiful shape. <laughs> so um, I would check it out. Um, if you are a big Pink Floyd fan, you're gonna have, you have to have it. Um, there's links in the description box below for uh, all the Pink Floyd reissues. And uh, if you use them, you'd be helping out the channel as well. So thank you for tuning in. Um, thank you for your support and we'll see you next time. This is Scott for The Pressing Matters. Have a great day.